is about um, mock-ups. So mock-ups, if you've not seen them before, um, are a really useful way of demonstrating to a client, to the examiner, how effective your piece of design is. So it's basically saying, I've designed a book cover, this is what it would look like as an actual book, look how amazing it is, please, you know, put my design on a book, basically. So it's a digital sort of draft or um, prototype of what you think your designs would look like. And they tend to look something like this, so they might have different angles, and they generally have sort of like blank sides or text on them where you would then put your own work. Mock-ups are an incredible thing. Lots and lots of graphic designers use them. Um, you know, you use them at degree level to pitch things to clients, to talk to, you know, your lecturers and show them your ideas. And especially for us to really show the examiner that, that, that level of professionalism, because um, this is a professional standard thing that designers do. Um, you can get mock-ups for basically anything. So things like magazines, things like phones, laptop screens, if you're doing a website, um, you can get mock-ups for all sorts of different packaging and products. So cans, cups, takeaway packaging, you know, coffee beans, like tons, absolutely tons. Um, all those, and it's just a really, really useful thing to use. So um, on Teams, in your sort of general uh, files area, you should see in class materials and then in your resources folder, so this might be a year 12 or it might be year 13, you should see a folder that says useful websites. And if you go into there, you'll see three links that say free mockups. Now, obviously to open this, you need to go to open in SharePoint. And then that'll take you so that you can open the links. So I've put three in here so that you can search around. So if I open these three, you'll see what it takes you to. So it takes you to three websites. Now these are websites that I use. Um, the last one, number three, is probably my favorite. These are websites where professional designers have made these mock-ups for you and then posted them on there for you to use. Now, because they're free, sometimes that can mean it's quite hard to actually get a hold of them um, and it's not so simple. So, for example, if I wanted to do this A Fly Fire mock-up, I would click on it and then I've got to find where I have to go to download it. Now, every website will be different. So, I'm going to guess it's that one. So, you can see it's changing when I click over it. And if I go to download, now this sometimes might reroute me, so you can see my download is going to start in a few seconds. So that one has downloaded it straight away. Sometimes when you go to these website sites, they will take you to another site. So if I go in here, for example, and I'm just going to look at book cover mock-up, free download. So for example, this one is already taking me to a different page. So sometimes it can be a bit of a sort of paper trail to actually find the original source of the mock-up to download it from. Sometimes you get so far and then you realise actually they're going to charge you in the end, which is really frustrating. Sometimes you have to sign up to these websites. So um, that's why actually this one, free pick, so this is number three in the list, um, is probably my favourite. Now this has lots of things on it, but I always use this. So I do resources, free and PSD. Now what that means is you get a Photoshop file. So mock-ups are Photoshop files at the end of the day. They're Photoshop files that someone else has put together, made it all look perfect and... Um, put together ready to go and that is what you need to look for so if I just type in book mock-up or book cover whatever because you've selected PSD anyway so you could type book mock-up or you could just type book so there we go so you can see I'm going to get some different ones now it depends what you've designed if I've only designed a front cover I'm probably going to look at that one if I want to show a full design so I've designed like the spine the front and the back I might want something like that if you're doing like a children's book you might want to look at just book and then see if you can get any open pages which is always quite nice um, so for example it shows you the inside of the book there um, so really just have a look around and see what works for you sometimes they have specific backgrounds so you can see these have got objects and hands in it depends on the theme of what you've done um, and whether that's going to work and it's just about looking at size as well so if you've done like a square design you're obviously going to need to type in square book if you're doing sort of like a, a billboard and you've done it landscape, you're going to need to look at landscape billboard or portrait billboard or poster or whatever. So it's just making sure that whatever you've designed is going to fit onto the mock-up that you then download. So that will then download um, and you can see that it's downloading in there. So if I then go to my downloads, I can show you what that will look like. Now there is a bit of variety because they're all made by different people. So if I open this one, 
this one's only got two files in. And what I want is the PSD. So the PSD file is the important one. If I go into here, this one's got several files in, but at the end of the day, all I want is the PSD. So if I open this and I open that PSD file, it will open in Photoshop. You can do this in PhotoP as well. So it's exactly the same system in PhotoP. So I'll show you it in PhotoP so that you can see how it works. Now this is the joy of, of PhotoP opening Photoshop documents. It means that you can do exactly the same as you would in PhotoP. So if I'm working in PhotoP, I need to go to File, Open, and then I need to find that PSD file. So I need to go back to my downloads, open up the one I'm looking for, and open that PSD file. It might take a few seconds, but eventually it will load in. Now I'll show you the Photoshop documents so that you can sort of see how similar they are. So they look exactly the same. And if I look at my layers, I've got exactly the same layers in my layers panel on the Photoshop and on the Photo P. Now you'll see you've got some different things going on here. So it depends how organized the person is that makes the, the document that you're working on. But usually they're pretty organized. So they'll have things in folders and they'll have them labeled for you. So I, you can see that that is the texture. And if I hide that, you can see it's added texture to that text to make it look more realistic. And if you sort of hide and show these things, you can sort of figure out how the document's been put together. Now, first step of advice is don't ever delete anything off one of these documents because you'll lose a key part. And once you've deleted it, you can't get it back. So all you want to do is look for the layer that has a different colour, maybe. Sometimes they're colour coded or it just says your design here or it says own image or something like that. So whoever's made it will have labelled it in some way to make it nice and clear. You're also looking for this sort of icon. So you can see we've got almost like a little image and then it's got a little icon in the bottom and it's the same on here. So you've got a little image and the icon in the bottom. Now I'll show you this in Photoshop. It is exactly the same in Photo P. What I want to do is I want to actually click that little image itself. So not the layer. So if I double click the layer, it'll open that. If I double click the name of the layer, it'll just rename it. If I double click that, it'll just hide and show it. So I want to double click that layer and can you see now it's brought us into a new document so it's opened up a whole new document for us now what that means is this is the document where you place whatever you want to place so i'm going to put a new layer on which means i can then delete whatever they've got on there and i'm going to drop something of mine in so i've got some stuff already prepared um what you want to put in there is your design so if you're designing some cool illustrations that are then going to go on tote bags you need to have those illustrations ready to hand and ready made before you get to this stage. It's always the last thing that you do. Um, it might be a scan of a drawing. It might be a photograph that you want to put on something. But ideally, if you've made it, um, you either need to scan or photograph it really well or you need to export it from wherever you're working. So if you remember, if you're in Photoshop, you need to go to File, Export. It's the same in Illustrator. Um, and in Photo P, Export as JPEG or PNG is fine. And what that does, that gives you a fairly high quality image to then put onto whatever it is that you want to put on there. So I drop that in. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm actually going to stretch it out a bit so that it's square. But obviously it depends what you're working with. I don't generally advise stretching things. Now this is just some patterns and textures made with ink. Um, it depends what your design is and what you're putting on there. But you need to have a JPEG of it or a photograph or a scan. Um, you could use a screenshot, but the, the Difficulties with screenshots is that sometimes they're quite low quality, um, so you might get blurriness, and we don't really want that. Now, obviously, I can still edit this, so if I'm not quite happy with it, you know, I could change the colour of it. Okay. Now, all I need to do now is go to File Save. So, not Save As, just Save. And by saving that document, it updates what's on the original document. So, as soon as this is saved, and I go back to my original document, you'll see that it's updated it and put my design on there, which looks pretty cool. Now, if I want to change that in any other way, so let's say I change the color again, go pink, all I need to do is then file save again. So I can keep changing it and keep editing it if I need to, and I can update it. I can have multiple designs and I could do them all at once and try them multiple times. Um, so it really is that easy and that's it. Then all I wanted to do, if I want to put that on my slides or print that out or whatever for presentation, I can screenshot it or I can do file export. Now I tend to save these as a Photoshop document just so I can come back and use the mock-up again. Um, 
and it's as simple as that. Now on Photo-P it's exactly the same thing so I'll show you really quickly. So double click the icon, make a new layer, delete whatever the original was, find whatever design you want to put on there, drop it on, put it where you want it, and then go file save. Now this one says save smart object because technically that's what this file is called, it's called a smart object and it's smart because when you save it, it updates and that's very clever. So save smart object, now it does take a little bit of time, but once we then go back to our document, so again we've got tabs up here, so very similar to Photoshop, when I go back to my original, you can see it's updated and it's put that design on there. You can see I've also got a folder for background here, so you can see I've got a background colour, and again, because we've got this blue eye, that's telling me that that layer is editable, so I'm assuming that this layer is editable too. So I'm going to select that, double click, and then you can see it brings me up colour. So if I want to change the colour of my background, it's as simple as choosing different colours and putting them on there. Now the, the sort of brighter colours work a bit better, so the shadow doesn't look too fake on there. Obviously I could change those colours and make them a bit more subtle, but you can see the more sort of grey they go, the more that shadow feels a little bit out of place. So I'm actually going to go sort of more that way. And there we go, now I've changed the colour of my background. That's exactly the same in Photoshop, um, and it just works really simply, so nice and easy. Now I'll show you in Photoshop a couple of different ones, just so you can see the different ways they might be set out. So I've got one here which was a CD cover, and again we've got quite a lot of stuff in the layers. So you can see these ones are locked, so I don't need to touch that. And I've got this one that says cover design, and you can see that little icon again there. So if I double click that, you can see I've already put my artwork in. I could choose something else, so I'm going to put a different piece of artwork in. Now obviously if I was doing an album cover I'd probably have some text on here, the name of the artist and things like that, but I'm not worried about that for now. And again, file, save, and that will update this, load it into here. Did I get the right one? There you go. So now it's updated it. Again, I've already changed my background colour, so you can see I've got lots of different things here. I've got the front cover, and then that's sort of like the back piece. If I wanted to change the colour of this back, I can, so you can see there's a layer that says colour. So I can actually change the colour of the, the sort of plastic part, which I don't really want to do, um, but you could if you wanted to, so I could maybe have it blue or something. And then if I just close that folder again, I can find my background colour, exactly the same thing, clicking the colour, and then I can go through and change different colours. And you can see the shadow and all the texture and all the 3D aspect that makes it feel very realistic stays in there and it stays with it, so you don't lose any of that stuff, which is one of the, the main bonuses of this. So that's my CD mock-up. Um, I've got one here which is a sort of billboard poster thing, exactly the same. So when you open it, it's like this. Open the folder, open the next folder, and then I'm looking for the one with the little icon on, so I can find it there. And then I've put my design in there. Now obviously I've made this design in here, so I've got loads and loads of layers in here, which is absolutely fine. That might be a bit complicated if you're working in something like Photo-P. It might not handle having that many layers open at the same time. Um, especially because I've got other documents open, so it's usually safer to make it on its own document first. Um, but you can, you know, add elements, move them around. I could change the colour of these things, I could make that bigger, I could move it up to the top left or whatever, file save, and then it will load it back into the document. So you can see that's changed. Now because this is one of is a photograph, there's nothing really else for me to change there, but that's absolutely fine. This one is a, a magazine mock-up, so you can see if I sort of hide my designs, these ones that are colour-coded, that's the original, and then I put my designs on there. Now, when I made my magazine, I'll show you the original sort of screenshot, I made both pages at once, and I just pretended that the middle of the page was there. So what I've then had to do, and sometimes you might have to do this if you've done a big design and it doesn't fit, or the billboard or something is sort of curved, or if you've got packaging that sort of like wraps around, you might have to figure it out in mock-up where that's going to go. So I've looked here and I can figure out that that is the one on the left hand side. So if I double click that icon again, all I've done is made it with the right size and just made sure that only half of it is showing. 
and then I've done the same thing on the other side with that one and I found that one which is here and you can see these say your image so it's talking to me my image so it's stuff that I want to put on there double click the icon and I've done exactly the same thing and I've just put it over the top Now the joy of this is that you can just keep using them and you can keep trying different things, you can change things up and the mock-ups look so professional um, that it's higher quality than anything you could physically make and it's a really nice way just to hit that sort of AO4 mark, that professional outcome. Obviously here I've got a background somewhere so you can see I've got a rectangle here at the back which if I hide that you can see that's my background. So again I could double click that and I could change the colour of it. Now the issue with this one is they've not done the shadows properly. So you can see the shadows there don't look right. That's not right. So all I need to then find is, well, where is that? Okay, well, that's just the next layer. So I can hide it and go, okay, well, that's the bit I'm worried about. If I set that to multiply, done, easy. The shadows look natural again. They're darkening the background, perfect. So sometimes it's just about checking and making sure. And multiply is definitely your best friend in a lot of these situations. You can see that if I set that to multiply, it would look darker and things like that. So it's just thinking about your layers, checking what's there, and obviously make sure you don't delete anything from the original design unless you're in that sort of separate new document where you can delete the template out. So that is mockups. Works the same in Photoshop as it does in Photopea. All you need to do is make sure that it's a PSD file. So when you're in your folders and you've downloaded the one you want, you need to make sure it's the PSD, not the JPEG. The JPEG won't have any layers, so you won't be able to do it. Um, and then you just need to have your design ready to go. So anything that you've made that you want to put on there and then play around, see what you can do with them, see what you can add um, and then save it and export it when you're happy.